How wonderful to be with Mark van der Gijs uh, again. That has been a while ago, Mark. Do you remember when we last talked to each other? That probably must have been about two years ago, at least. It's been a while. It's uh, yeah, but it's good to be back. Good to see you again, and uh, good to see that uh, Bitcoin and blockchain are still going strong and getting stronger every day. So uh, absolutely, and still in the Netherlands. Uh, so this. Um, this uh, interview is for the, the Dutch Blockchain Coalition, which is basically uh, looking at usage of, of big companies who are looking in how they can use blockchain and uh, for a conference. And well, I just want to show you uh, the last one of the last interviews we had. And that was um, when you were uh, at, the, at the Blockchain Coalition in 2017. And you said, well, there's a 60 percent chance that uh, the blockchain will go to um, 500,000 and it has a chance to go to 1 million. And uh, you were at that moment, you were completely convinced that it was uh, that, blo blo that Bitcoin was really the, um, the, 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 the most important, uh, the most important coin. And I just want to ask you, uh, are you um, still thinking that way? Exactly the same. Nothing has changed. I think, you know, when we talked about it in 2017, um, what I told you was that it, it depends all on when the institutions come on board. So when the, the hedge funds, when the you know the large the large pension funds maybe even come on board. Once they do that, the price will start going up very quickly. And you know it's happening right now. I mean, you know we we went up forty percent over the past four weeks, I think. And uh, yeah, I mean to me the, the sky is still the limits. And the numbers I'm, I, I I mentioned in those in the, are yeah I still believe in those. I still think we can get to five hundred thousand dollars. And the thing is, if you reach five hundred thousand dollars, it's very likely you're going to get to one million as well, because the bigger the asset class gets, the more interesting it gets for the really big investors. People yeah. like people like BlackRock don't want to invest in a, in, a, in an in an asset with a three hundred thirty or three hundred fifty billion market cap. They they get interested when it's you know when it's in the trillions, and you know that's going to happen only when Bitcoin's worth you know hundreds of thousands of dollars. So uh, still very bullish. Yeah. So at the moment it's eighteen thousand nine hundred eighty-one dollars. What was the highest uh, in two thousand seventeen? December twenty seventeen on Bitstamp it reached nineteen thousand six hundred sixty-six. So we're a little bit below it at the moment, and uh, yeah, it's very likely we're going we're going past it very soon. So uh, very very bullish market is starting. Yeah, and you said, and, and what happened between two thousand seventeen uh, when we went to? Well, with Bitcoin, it wasn't that bad. The altcoins really had a problem. But uh, what, what happened in that period? Well, so what happened in the run-up in 2017 is that retail came into the market. So small investors, they all put all their money in. And, you know, what happened then after Bitcoin started to go down, they all started to sell. So, you know, they came in fast and they went out fast. And basically, if you, if you, leave, if you look at that, that, that graph you're showing right here, if you leave the 2017 top out, you can you can actually still see a, a, a slope, an upward upward sloping uh, graph. So it's really it's really retail that that went in and went out, and then it started slowly growing with you know with more people coming in, and now finally also institutions coming into the market. Yeah, you were predicting that for a while. You said you know I see that the infrastructure at the bank uh, systems and at the regulators that that Bitcoin is becoming an acceptable asset uh, class for um you know for institutional investors but still it took three years before they pick it up do you is that more it doesn't have to do anything with bitcoin or has it maybe something to do with uh COVID or with the the reset of the finance uh, system i think that COVID certainly accelerated it it may have been a bit later if, if without COVID. Uh, i mean it, it took a lot longer than i thought i i really thought it would happen in 2018 latest 2019 but <laughs> It's it's you know I'm always thoroughly with everything so I actually I know that so it's not a, not a real surprise to be honest but um, I mean I knew it would happen one day and it's I think with COVID certainly it's accelerated uh, simply because governments are printing so much money and that is not sustainable and I think people are looking for for some sort of a hatch in case things really you know go wrong uh, the hatch has always been gold but I think that hatch is slowly shifting or you know relatively fast shifting uh, to Bitcoin right now so Bitcoin is becoming the new store of value. If the dollar doesn't survive or doesn't keep its value, there's something else that will keep, will, you know, will, will keep the value. That that might be Bitcoin in this case. Yeah. And what role uh, does it play in the portfolio? Do you think hey, it's just a little asset class, and we were just investing a little bit in it to 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 see if there's an uptake, or 
does it also do they see it uh, that there's a serious role for the uh, for the class? No, not yet. It's it's really just a small part of our portfolio to hedge against against inflation, to hedge against the collapse of the financial system. If we see that you know the dollar is really not performing well, if we really see that the economy is much worse off than we thought it was, it might become a much bigger asset class. Also, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. The more the more it goes up, the more people will, the more institutions will come in, and the more the price will keep keep on rising, and the more importance the asset class becomes. But right now, it's not there yet. It's it's going to take a lot of time. It's you know the bull run is literally just getting started. I think it's uh, it it could take another well at least another twelve months. Before we before we hit a hundred thousand yeah. uh, dollars, but then again, you know, it could go very fast as well. If if some really big investors come in, if pension funds come in, then it go it could go you know sky high within within a few months. So that's possible. Yeah, it was the same with the dot com crisis uh, with the dot com. At a certain point, uh, institutional investors could not avoid the dot com, and they yeah. had to get into it, and they they had to buy it, and and then uh, but then afterwards we had a going down and then afterwards it went up and then now it's the most uh, valuable asset class of all the companies ever um do you think that bitcoin needs to be useful for anything else than store of value does it need to perform a certain role in life or is it enough just to be there and to be desirable and to be a brand well i mean the current role is just a store of value right so as we can see it is it's sufficient to get up to the get to get a price increase that's for sure but I think there's there are a lot of other roles as well, and we just don't really see them at this point. The, the, you know, we we talked about Bitcoin becoming a currency in the early days. I I don't really see that right now. It may happen eventually, but that's going to be and it's that's not going to be a, an on-chain solution. So that means it we will not see transactions directly on the Bitcoin blockchain. I think because uh, they will be too expensive. It's going to be you know a second layer solution or even a third layer solution. Um, so something like Lightning Network, for example, or you know something else. Uh, what it is, I don't know, but I mean, it, 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 at this point, Bitcoin is certainly not not right for on-chain transactions. Um, so I don't see it as a as a currency yet. But you know, who knows? I mean, it's it's hard to predict. I think it's it's it, it's 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 too volatile at this point, and it goes up too fast to become valuable as a currency at, at, at this stage. Uh, but you know, once it hits, you know, say five hundred thousand dollars, it may it may it may be different. Who knows? Yeah, you, know, you see now it's um, the transaction cost is two dollars, right? For yeah. one uh, for one uh, thing, and it it even went up. It even went up in November and October. It went up to uh, to twelve dollars. So there's there's a huge volume increase, and now it's 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 quite it's quite expensive. What about lighting? I mean, we've been waiting for lightning to be there to have a uh, off-chain uh, transaction possibility, so that we can have much more transaction at much lower cost, and we only have a few things happening on the main uh, net. What's happening with lightning? Well, lightning is going strong, very strong actually. Um, so I, I think if we get if we get transactions, it's going to have it's going to happen at first on the lightning network. So the only thing you need the Bitcoin blockchain for is to to open and close the channels, basically. But to do the transactions, you can use the Lightning Network. Um, it's much cheaper. Um, there's actually more privacy on there, so there's a lot of advantages on there. And you know, the thing is with Bitcoin, you know, if Bitcoin say Bitcoin goes to hundred thousand dollars or more, you know, then the transaction fees also go up ten to 15, 20 times. So instead of you know two dollars right now, it's going to be twenty dollars, or you know, instead of twelve dollars, it could be one hundred twenty or even two hundred dollars for a transaction. That means that there's no way you can do a small transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain anymore in the future. So you need you need a second layer solution, and yeah, Lightning is, is super cheap in that regard. Yeah. So what are the, so how how can I do as a as a as a normal user? How can I basically you do a Lightning solution? Is it already operational? Is it already no, used? I've been using it for two years. No, no, I've been using it for two years. I'm an investor as well, actually, um, in the company behind it, Lightning Labs. But um, yeah, I mean, you run your own nodes and you open channels with other people and. Basically, what you do is, um, you know, you set up a Lightning wallet somewhere, and you can you can transact with other people that have a Lightning wallet, and it's 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 routed th routed through the through the through the network. Um, it's I mean it's 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 not easy enough yet for the average user. I would say um, I mean I I, yeah. I, I, would, I would say it's not at the moment. It's still not it's not, still not very uh, it's still not very in my face. It's not easy to to get a wallet uh, for that no. uh, thing. I mean, I see that uh, you know you can do a million transaction. You know, if you, 
a second. So that that is of course much enough to do most of the transactions which are necessary in the world. Yeah. Uh, and do you know the cost of a of a lightning uh, uh, transaction? Is there or somewhere a place where you can see that? Uh, it, it's very low. I mean, basically, you, 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 I don't know. I don't know what 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 what, what the average cost is at the moment, but um, it's it's very low. It's uh, you basically you you pay a little bit to the channels. That's what you do. Yeah. So it's a it's it's pennies or cents or, or yeah, yeah, cents. Low, low, less less than that. You can do you can do you can you can just you know you, pay, you can pay part of a cent to the Lightning Network without without it costing anything. So it's uh, you can do really micro transactions. You know, it's something you cannot do with Bitcoin anymore. So it's 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 a good solution, I think. Yeah. But you know, it is a good solution. We're we're still waiting. But I'm 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 here now in 2020, still asking Mark for the guys who is still was in 2017 already enthusiastic about Lightning. Now it's there. Now there is wallets. Now there is possibilities to to basically have it as a service. Yeah. Where am I? You are an investor in these kinds of companies. Where can I see the Lightning solution, which has millions of, uh, you know, millions of transactions per second at a very small part of a cent? Okay, that's what we want. Where can I see it? Well, you'll 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 you you won't see it yet because it's it's not used that much yet. Simply because people don't use Bitcoin to pay. Um, but you know, those those things will change eventually, I think. But it's 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 way too early for that. Okay. Uh, but, but, but basically, what is technology now to do millions of transactions per second at a very, very small, um, you know, part of a cent as a transaction cost? The technology is there. Is it is it solid? Is it grown up? Is it? Can you trust it? Uh, it is quite solid. It's it's not completely there yet. So the thing is, like I wrote my own notes, and these things they break down every now and then. You have to reset them. You have to open channels, close channels again. It's 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 not ready for the mainstream. I would say. Okay. It's uh, like in the earlier days when we were yeah. buying bitcoins, and you really had to know somebody how to buy a bitcoin, and it really was it was very complicated. So Lightning needs a nice yeah. interface. There are solutions. At the, there are easier solutions already on the market. Like I think Casa has a solution that you can use easily. But still, it's it's not it's not as easy as you know as sending a bitcoin through a wallet to someone else. It will get there very soon. I mean, it's you know it, it's 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 a matter of. Yeah, not not even years anymore. It's uh, it's 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 around the corner. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, hey, you know, I mean, everybody, of course, was expecting everything to be done in a couple of years. Okay. We started in 2010 with Bitcoin, and now we're 10 years later, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's 10 years, and it's uh, it's now worth 350 billion. And but uh, but the, the the interface is now easy, and now. You can PayPal will accept it, right? They're, they're, will accept it as a way to basically pay your uh, pay your fees, and of course they do it automatically. Switch it back to uh, to dollars, yeah. but it's ten years is not a lot of time for a new currency to come to the market. Absolutely, but, yeah, and that's you know people always want to see solutions, you know, right away, but it, it takes time, especially with money. I mean, you cannot you cannot fuck up because you know it's. It, it's you're talking about real money here. You, you, things have to be have to work, have to really work, and and don't crash because if people lose their money in a crash, you know you, you can't you can't turn it, turn it back anymore. That's that's that's. that's and Bitcoin yeah. has been very reliable in that respect. Okay, let's yeah. let's talk a little bit about before we go to other points. Um, what about some other uh, currency? Ethereum. Uh, what's your um, what's your evaluation of the of the ecosystem there? And what do you think of Ethereum 2.0, which is I think launching December first? If yeah, very soon. Yeah. No, I mean Ethereum 2.0. It's, it's it's I think it's good that they go to a, to a proof of stake model. Um, I mean I'm, I I I don't invest in Ethereum as a, as a, you know to to make money. I, it's 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 a, it's for me it's a utility token. It's 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 great. You know the, the ERC20 tokens that are based on it. Uh, the red bitcoins on the Ethereum in the Ethereum blockchain, they're great. So Ethereum is very important for the for the ecosystem. Um, yeah. And I think with Ethereum 2.0, they you know they will probably stay in the lead. There are some some good competitors out there that could eventually beat them. But I think you know even though it took years to to get Ethereum 2.0, they did it now. They managed it. They they managed to get enough tokens to for for staking. So it's got, it's really going to happen. And, yeah, it's 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 a good token. I think it's it's interesting, um, but it's not it's not a store of value token, of course. So you know, it's for me as as an investor, it's not something I would put money in. But it could it could go up yeah, a lot. But yeah, it's just 
the thesis yeah. is, 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 is not right for me personally. Okay, we'll have a separate interview about uh, Ethereum 2.0 because I'm really interested in because a lot of the the problems which Bitcoin has to face, you know, like going from proof of work to proof of stake, that you don't use this ridiculous amount of uh, electricity. That's what Ethereum is going is they're trying to do on December 1st. Yep. And then they're trying to increase the amount of transactions and to make the cost of transaction go down. A lot of these things, you know, with second tier solution, a lot of the things, Ethereum is a great place to see where Bitcoin is going. And Bitcoin is the biggest brand, but Ethereum is really interesting in terms of technology. People ask me, the third one, XRP, which is going ridiculously. Look, it's now down 5% in one uh, in one hour, but it went up in the last 24 22 percent in the last 24 hours i mean this one is going berserk i mean it's now 70 cents yeah and it was like uh i mean it's, it's going huge do you have any idea why this why this is a popular coin why this is number three because i mean yeah because they have a very strong community that is very greedy that wants to make quick money and that doesn't really understand what's what what xrp is really all about i mean to me it's a centralized coin it's a coin with a huge overhang of tokens that can that can hit the market. Um, it's a it's a protocol that's very good actually, but that doesn't need the XRP token. So, in my opinion, people using XRP don't really understand what they're investing in. It's no. uh, it's it's not my it's not my token either. Um, actually, you know, a few years ago, I was asked by the World Bank what I thought of XRP, and I told them what I thought about it. And so, yeah. It's to me. It's not. It's not. It's. It's not the right. It's not the right. The right. The right. The right token. It's. You know. I, I do believe that the protocol is good, but the token itself isn't that. Isn't that valuable? Uh, but there are so many people that are that are hyping it on Twitter. I mean, just now actually, I, I put out a tweet about XRP, and I got I got so many negative comments on it from people that, you know, put all their money in it, and they you know they they don't understand that it's vaporware basically. It's a pity. Well, it's interesting. I mean, Bitcoin is, it doesn't do anything, but it, but because everybody thinks it's valuable, it's valuable. It doesn't do. Ethereum is a useful, it's a working AM machine. You know, it's just yeah. like, uh, but but uh, it's it's worth six times less than uh, than the Bitcoin and XRP is now uh, one, uh, half of the Ethereum value, but it's going up like crazy, and it has been worth more than that. You know, it was it was oh, yeah. worth uh, one point five dollars. But the whole token has been used, has been made originally to create banking uh, traffic, uh, you know, to, to make it uh, to make it easy to send money from one bank to the other, which is actually still extremely difficult. But now they have a solution, and they use they don't use their own token. It's it's really correct. Yeah, been one of the been most, one of the wonders. Yeah, most most people don't realize that though that they don't use their own token. That's that's the interesting thing about it. People seem to think that the Ripple protocol is XRP, but it, it's it's there are two different things. So yeah, it's not being used. Ripple is having all kinds of software, which basically helps banks to transact with each other. And no. uh, but they don't use X XRP. No. OK, then uh, let's take a couple of more. The E, the, the uh, Tether. Tether. Yeah, I mean, the first the first, the first yeah. big stable coin, the first US dollar stable coin, uh, a lot of controversy in the past because people don't believe that it's fully backed by dollars. I think it's. It's probably fully back, but I don't know because there has never been a real audit, at least no no public audits. Uh, but you know they were very they were essential actually in the first bull run and bull run of Bitcoin when Tether was really used to get money into the market quickly. Yeah. Um, and, I mean there are many more stable coins now. They're still number one, uh, and you know for yeah I don't see that change anytime soon unless an, an audit comes out that they're not fully backed by Bitcoin by um, uh, by US dollars. But who knows? I mean I don't know. I mean I have no inside information there, so. No, no. You don't know if the if the organization can be trusted. Well, you know that banks are not fully covered by. <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, that's banks. Uh, anything which the banks have isn't yeah. covered by dollars. You know, just only three percent or something like that. They offer every hundred dollars, they have three dollars in the bank. So, and they want from uh, Tether, they want to have everything back. So this is really interesting that they have to do all these different um, judgment. Okay. Anyway, so these are these are the list. Is there any other coin of these three thousand uh, which are out there which you think are interesting? Well, there are many DeFi coins interesting. So decentralized finance coins. Yeah. I mean, you see Chainlink here at number six, which I think is a really good coin actually. Of all the coins, uh, you know, I, I don't really invest in altcoins. If I would invest in one, Chainlink would probably be the first one I would invest in. Uh, okay. 
No, they do. They, 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 they provide, too. Yeah, they provide oracles. So they 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 provide information. So for example, say you have a bet. You know, there's a there's a football match, and you you make a bet on who wins the match. Oracle can provide the data to say who won the match. So that's that's the source to go to to to, to get that data. If you want to insurance policy is based on the weather, for example, Oracle can the Oracle in, in Oracle and Chainlink can provide that. So they they provide oracles for, for so data sources uh, for smart contracts, and I think that is the future. And if yeah. they if they play their cards well, they can do really 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 well. Okay, uh, any other DeFi uh, uh, coins which you think are interesting? Yeah, I mean there there are so many interesting tokens out there. It's it, the thing is it, so generally. Vincent, generally, DeFi, I think, is going to be very big. The, most of the tokens that are out there right now for DeFi may not survive, though, because it's going to take a few years before DeFi really breaks through. People think it's going to happen quickly. It's going to take years. It is really, really hard. I mean, I find it hard to, to do these things. It's, I mean, or hard. I mean, it, it takes time to figure out how Uniswap works, you know, how, you, how to get those tokens. And, you know, it, it's the, the, the protocols are actually, they're much more difficult than, than you know when Bitcoin was launched or Ethereum or you know any of the other ones. So it's 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 actually more interesting in a way, but because it's because because that is also much more difficult and it will take years before this will break through. And I just believe that most tokens that are doing well right now might not be there when, when it breaks through. So no, it's uh, I don't have any favorite tokens there. Okay. Do you know uh, synthetics? Synthetics in the, in the sense that um, but yeah, it's it's a big platform where they tokenize uh, just about everything. So I mean, one of the goals of the decentralized finance is, of course, that you can tokenize, tokenize shares, tokenize yeah. loans, tokenize bonds, tokenize yeah. all kinds of things. And this is one of the biggest platform in that in the De DeFi uh, arena. I don't know them. I mean, I probably have heard of them, but I, I don't know them. It just there's a number of platforms that that, that you know securitization tokenization uh, i mean that's that is certainly something that's going to be very big and it's yeah it's, well it's, i mean we need yeah. i mean if you look at the current system the way money works the way money is sent to banks it is completely ridiculous if you really go into that it's extremely complicated to send money from one person to another through banks you know it, it's it's difficult on a national level but it's also it's extremely crazy difficult on an international level it's really amazing that it works and Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and just ways to move money from one per place to another is, is really a very basic function. But the way shares work, mm -hmm. buying shares, and then you know, and then you buy them and you have rule, you have, you have you, you you sell it here and they, they store it there. Shares are also very difficult to move. We need to tokenize all these subjects so you can really I can have my shares and can send it over there. Is there any but these things are big institutions, and they move extremely slow. They will. You, you see that Swift is uh, Swift is experimenting with payments. Yeah. Nasdaq uh, has always been uh, very much in the front to basically experiment with uh, with blockchains to to make the whole settlement easily. Do you see interesting projects there? Interesting current players who are using black, uh, blockchain to bring the, the the promise closer. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a number of players in the space, but nobody really breaks through. I mean. I've been looking at security token exchanges for more than three years. I actually worked on one for a while. It's it's too early. It's not breaking through, and that's mainly because of regulations. And, and you know, countries just don't really allow them. Countries like Singapore are on the forefront of those of that. But you you need the U.S. You need you know you need the big markets, and it's so it, it's it's still too early. And I'm not I'm not investing in any of these companies right now. I'm just waiting until you know one or two leading players come out. And I may I may put some money in there um, to to help them, but I mean for sure the, the old system is gonna is gonna break down and it's gonna break down fairly soon. It's uh, it's a matter of of, of years. Yeah. Okay, so we have the securitization and tokenization of of these assets um, and other uh, platforms. Of course, with DeFi, are um, is our loans to have automatic uh, systems to basically distribute loans. Yeah. Um, how long will it take? Before those kinds of platforms will become so stable and accepted by regulators, and the technology is easy to use, that it will come to the market. Will it take one year, three year, five year, ten year? What is your uh, what is your impression? I think most likely it's going to be ten years. That's how long it takes. You are always early. You are always way too early. If you now no, say it takes ten years, will it take twenty years? 
No, not uh, probably not 20 years, but I, I look at peer to peer lending. I was I was a big fan of peer to peer lending. I got involved in Lending Club back in what was it 2008 maybe, mm -hmm. and I really thought that's going to change the whole lending markets. It's you know, and it just it it's it's not taking off. It's taking so much time, and it's really because of regulators. It's not because people don't want to do it. I was involved in in one of the leading platforms in China, and the government just literally you know pulled out the plug, and it, the whole market fell apart. It was a multi-billion dollar company. It just went to to a few hundred million. It's just you know it's 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 not happening yet. So if, if peer to peer lending, which is you know not as difficult to understand and to regulate as DeFi, if that doesn't even you know break through in, in, in 10, 12 years, you know, DeFi is gonna take another 10 years at least. Okay. So the influence of uh, regulation is enormous. That determines the speed in which things can be accepted. Yeah, because the average person won't use it if it's not regulated. They're just afraid of it. And the other thing is that you know if you, the, the financial institutions won't use it either because they only work with regulated products. So without it, you can have the best ideas in the world. And you can love them and they may work very well, but you know without users, you, you won't get there. And that's the thing with DeFi right now. It's great. I love it. It's it's fantastic what they're doing, but they have no users. I mean, yeah, they have users, but it's 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 a very very small number compared to the to to the population of the world. So, so it's gonna, it's going to take a long time. So the banks don't have to worry. They don't have to worry about that. Now, I think they have to worry about a lot of other things, but not about DeFi. Yeah. Okay. Now we are in a situation at uh, COVID that uh, again, you know, the trillion, the trillions of dollars, uh, which are basically created as debt, is is going up incredibly. It's now at two hundred fifty billion, two hundred fifty trillion dollars, two hundred fifty thousand, <laughs> two hundred fifty thousand um, milliards. Uh, um, how do you call, how do you call it in English? Uh, milliards. A milliard billion, a billion. A milliard is a billion. Okay, yeah. Well, sometimes I, people also use tri uh, a, a trillion as a okay, tri anyway. yeah. tri trillion is Dutch for a billion, but billion and, and billion in Dutch is trillion in English. Yeah. Yes. So it's, it's but anyway, I mean, we're having a debt of about two hundred fifty trillion dollars. I mean, it's yeah. like two and a half times the gross national price, going up like crazy. What do you think? I mean, you were very outspoken that it was, it was, it was this would lead to a crisis. You know, when we're talking about the previous one, what do you think this level of debt is that sustainable? And and and, and how will how long will it take before there's a correction or a reset? I think the reset could be around the corner. Actually, I mean, IMF has been talking about it. The World Economic Forum has been talking about it. It's simply not sustainable. It's it, there is so much debt it can never be paid back. It can never mm -hmm. be paid back. So the question is, do you, do you even want to try to pay it back as a government? Or do you at a certain point say, you know, we realize there's just no way we can ever pay it back. Let's just do a reset and throw away all, all, all the debts we have and start all over again. And I think that's that's what they have. That's why they're starting with a central central bank digital currency right now. I really believe that because if they do that, a lot of this of the of the commercial banks will not survive. So that's that is a big risk for commercial banks. And no, so in it, but if they don't survive, the whole system can fall apart. So what they can do then is basically get all the consumers that are the bank at the big banks or the smaller banks, and basically force them over to the central bank. So if you have a hundred thousand euro in a certain bank, the bank goes bankrupt. The central bank gives you hundred thousand euro in their in their in their accounts. So basically, your you know the banks are bankrupt. You still have you know your money or at least, at least some of your money. You keep that and you get it back from the central bank. Yeah. Um, so it's for them a way to to basically avoid the the, the, the whole system collapsing, um, but yeah, in, in a way they can manage banks to go bankrupt, because you know look a lot of banks are just not viable anymore. I feel if you look at the balance sheets, it's uh, you know their time has come. I think and that's that's. Now you're talking about okay, so the, the CBDC, the central bank digital currency, which um, everybody is experimenting with. I, I talked to somebody from the Dutch uh, central bank. Yeah. They, Olaf, uh, he's, he's the director. He says we're going. To, we're experimenting with it inside the Netherlands, inside Europe. Um, we're thinking about it. We're experimenting, but everybody at the, all the banks are uh, basically all the central banks are doing it. China is really go, moving forward with it. Uh, they are experimenting in two provinces with uh, with the digital with their own digital uh, RMB. Yeah, so in Shenzhen, it was was introduced um, in early in late, late September, early October, and Suzhou is the, the second one, second city now where they introduced it. 
And the cities are fighting to, to be the next one on the line. It's on the, on the oh, really? Yeah, it's unbelievable. Everybody and wants that. How does it work? Because they already have the, one of the most smoothest payment system ever. QR code, bank phone, pay, yeah. no transaction cost, no waiting. Um, you know, it, 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 it runs very smooth. What does the... What does the CDBC, uh, the Central Bank Digital Currency of China, has to offer? It's exactly the same. It's actually it doesn't work as well yet. People complain that that you know the UI, the user interface, is not good enough. So they're working on it. It's exactly the same. I mean, just like Alipay and WeChat, they 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 they, they are very similar. So the Central Bank Digital Currency works exactly the same. And the way the way they do it right now is they basically they tell everybody you know if, if you if you have a wallet, if you got a wallet. We're going to distribute 200 RMB, so about 20, 30 euro, whatever it is right now, to everybody who has a wallet. You get so like a lottery. Not everybody gets it, but if you have a lottery, you have a chance to get it. So, you know, in Shenzhen, 2 million people set up a wallet within one weekend. And that's how you get distribution. And what's going to happen now, if the government, if the government distributes your money, if you get, you know, money back from, ta from tax, for example, you get it in that wallet. If you get a, you know, if, if anything related to the government has to be done through the CBD, CBDC. So they're forcing you to use it, and um, yeah, I mean, there's if you make things a little bit cheaper using it, people will start using it, and yeah. So we have no idea what the next step's going to be. I think it's very dangerous though, because basically you give the government control over your complete over your, over your money. They can decide what you use your money for. If they don't like you to buy something that's whatever, I mean, if you want to buy drugs, I mean, don't buy drugs in China, but if you want to buy drugs, you know, you don't do it. You cannot even do it with CBDC because they can see it, right? So it, it, they, they control everything. And yeah. Isn't, can they not see it at the moment anyway? Because I mean, they, they, they WeChat, uh, WeChat and, and, and Alipay, they, they have insight in those, uh, in, those, uh, in those books anyway. Yeah, they can. The thing is, you know, like for example, if you pay for something that's illegal in China, and this is just a, just a random example, but the way it works is you pay someone a private amount on their on their WeChat or their Alipay. So you don't see what you're paying it for. It doesn't go through a company. Uh, and probably, you know, the CBDC, they will ask you what it's for, likely. I think Alipay and WeChat don't do that. Not under certain, not be, not at least not below certain amounts. Um, but I just think that, you know, they'll, they'll be more strict with the CBDC, I think. And maybe eventually it's going to be integrated into WeChat and Alipay. That's what I think, actually, because yeah. WeChat, yeah. I mean, WeChat and Alipay are used, for example, in, uh, in in Africa. You can even in Vancouver here, you can pay with pay with WeChat in supermarkets. I mean, yeah. So I can use I can use Realme to pay for things. So you know, why not use the CBDC for that eventually? Say so that if you, you know, if you want to pay in Africa for something, you have to use CBDC money, and that's a way to get the Realme to become a more global currency. It's it's a Trojan horse strategy, and you know they're playing it. Okay, yeah. So they only have to talk to two companies and saying, in three months you will use uh, CDBC for everything, and then they they will connect that database to their stuff. And and if it's if it's up and running and fast enough, you will notice the difference. Is that a dangerous or a positive environment? What does it mean for the financial and the economic system and the power of the government versus uh, commercial banks? Yeah, it's dangerous. I mean, I I I think people have no idea what 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 they're signing up for. Um, to give an example, in, in China they have a, a, a new a new kind of punishment for people that that do fraud with bank cards or SIM cards. They the the, the punishment is not you don't have to go to jail. You don't you know, but five years you cannot use any digital currencies. That's the, the punishment. And people might think, okay, well that's fine. Five years. The thing is, in China everything is digital. You cannot you cannot take a bus. You cannot take a an Uber that a DD is called over there. You can't do anything. No. Even if you want to give if you want to give money to to a to a beggar on the streets, they have a QR code. Yes, you know? they don't accept cash. Yeah, it's, you cannot live without without a digital currency. You anymore. cannot. You cannot. If I, I went there last year two times, and uh, the first time I I didn't have uh, money on my WeChat account, yeah. and the second time I did, and everything was so easy. Mm -hmm. Before I had to go to. Can you order a taxi for me? And I can pay you with, <laughs> yeah. my, my, my credit card. Well, to get mm -hmm. your credit card. Can I pay you with cash? I mean, I don't yeah. want cash. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and a lot of people said, hey, I'll order a taxi for you. You can basically drive, but don't give me any money. It's, I'll pay for you. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. cannot survive uh, unless you go to very expensive restaurants. You can uh, make very expensive hotels. You can uh, use a credit card. But it's yeah. really impossible. And I felt way more at home when I basically had my uh, when I had a way to uh, to get money into my WeChat account, it really yeah. worked wonderful. 
So what, what's what the government wants to do? So next year, the 20, 2022, the uh, Winter Olympics are going to be in Beijing or in Jiangjiakou, north of Beijing. Yeah. Um, they are going to issue wallets to everybody visiting China during that time. You get you get a wallet with a central bank digital currency. You can change your euro or US dollar into it, and you can pay with that wallet everywhere. So you don't need to have WeChat or Alipay. So that's that's the strategy. Yeah, we'll see how that works. Let's yeah. um, go to one more uh, uh, one of your companies you started, and that was uh, Hot Eight, yeah. the biggest mining company, uh, which you started with uh, with some partners, and you went to uh, you brought it to the stock market. Uh, how is mining doing at the moment in uh, in Canada? Well, much better again since Bitcoin went up a lot. Uh, Hot Eight mined at a loss in, in Q3, uh, but now they are very profitable again. Um, so right now it's doing very well, but it's you know it's 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 a very volatile industry with Bitcoin going through a bear market right after we launched it. We had a pretty difficult time actually, um, but you know it's 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 doing well. It's uh, there's a new CEO coming on on December first, and uh, yeah, she's from the she's more from the hosting industry. So I think the, the strategy may change a little bit, um, but it's yeah. I mean the company's doing well again. It's uh, it went through a difficult time, but I'm happy to see that uh, that times are changing and. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not involved with it anymore. So I, I no, 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 you went out at a certain point. But I just wonder, I mean, uh, you see that the, the stock uh, the stock in the last uh, year basically yeah. you know, was flat. Yeah. In the, and, and actually it has gone down. It, it's it's not it's been not a very successful company in terms of stock, but it's still there. Yeah. How is how is the mining industry developing? What's happening in China? Is is Canada now a big mining hub? What What's happening? Yeah, so what you're seeing, and I mean, China is still the biggest in the world. They they own the vast majority of mining, but, but the problem in China right now is that it's getting harder and harder for miners to sell their Bitcoin for renminbi. So, for them, it's hard to pay for their their power costs because you you need to sell your your Bitcoin to pay for for your for your overheads, right? And so they're looking actively at different solutions. And there are solutions by selling it overseas and then changing the US dollar back into renminbi in China. That's that's one way. But they're also looking at, you know, starting to mine outside of China. So they're looking at Kazakhstan, Iran, uh, where they have cheap power. But there is a political risk there. Um, I mean, Venezuela, for example, offered us a location to put miners. And look, you get electricity for free. But the thing is, you don't know what's going to happen six months down the road. So, you know, are you, I'm not going to do that, right? And so some of these miners contacted us. And um, so we're looking to relocate some substantial miners actually to northern Canada. Uh, there's there's a lot of hydropower available there, hundreds of megawatts for for virtually nothing. Um, that's that's a that's a project I'm working on right now. But you know we'll see how that goes. It's uh, but there's certainly there's certainly a, a new market for Chinese miners outside outside of China, uh, meaning that you know China likely won't have the uh, the majority of the hash rate anymore in in the future. It, can, it will take a few years maybe, but it's it's I think it's going to go down. What's the price of a kilowatt hour um, if you buy it in bulk uh, there in Canada? Um, depending where you get it, about 1.6 cents, uh, that is Canadian cents, so it's even less in US. Um, so including taxes, it's just over two cents, but I think at the moment. Wow. Canadian. That's, that's, all, that's all coal based uh, electricity? No, it's hydro, it's water. It's, uh, yeah. so it's, it's, it's renewable energy. We, we, we don't use coal. I mean, coal and, and Bitcoin is not something that goes together, in my opinion. That's just. You know, and you know, with climate change, that's that's not something you want to do. Um, so everything I want do for, I do from this point onwards is is, is really renewables. It's uh, yeah, I think it's the only way to do it. And you know, this is these are stranded assets, right? So this this energy is not used for anything else. It's really about you know the problem is it's it's in locations that are extremely hard to reach. You know, six hours on the dirt roads in in northern Canada. You cannot reach it during the winter because it's too cold. You cannot build anything in the winter because it's completely frozen over. But then again, once you build it, I mean, it, it's a perfect location to do it because it's it's always cold, um, so you don't have to you don't have to cool things. Energy is almost for free. There is no no competition. Governments are happy to have a few a few a few jobs there. Um, so yeah, I, th I think it's a, it's a good business. Okay, that's the uh, last question. Um... I'm, I'm doing this interview for the uh, Dutch Blockchain Coalition, which is a, a group of um, you know, very interesting big companies who are trying to figure out what they can do with blockchain. And then it's IBM and the banks and, uh, and, and big pension companies and the government. And they, they basically want to say, hey, can we redesign these systems? Uh, and um, their focus 
the focus is at the moment is six uh, is six points is mm -hmm. uh, self sovereign identity logistics you know academic certificates that's a very practical thing to make, prove that you have a certain diploma to make sure that pensions can go from one to the other and and mortgages can you um, how is it going with blockchain applications in the normal world which to, to basically make it easier for for normal processes like these well, I mean, you, you look, you don't read a lot about it in, 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 in mainstream media, but things have moved forward a lot since we last talked two, three years ago. Um, a lot of companies are working on, on, on applications, also big companies. A lot of things are being developed, um, but it, it's just not something that you read about in the media because it's it's too difficult for people to understand. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm working myself on, on, on something in, in the healthcare space with digital identity and a digital vault. So, you know, it's... It, it, there's a lot of stuff happening, but it's happening in the background. People don't need to understand whether it's um, a, a, um, a blockchain solution or it's, if it's if it's central server behind it. They don't understand it anyway. They, they don't want to know it. No. Uh, yeah, that's true. So let's see. Uh, you said um, you have this uh, this Ikigai network. Yeah, Ikigai that's network. Your, that's one of the companies you uh, you invest in. What does it do? Yeah, I found it actually. Co-founded it. Uh, it's, based out, it's based in place of Zug in Switzerland. Um, it is a company where basically it's, it gives you a digital identity and a digital vault where you can keep all your healthcare data. So it's a bit like an, an uh, electronic medical record system. Uh, so your your medical data can be stored in the digital vault, um, and people can access it. So you can give doctors access to it, or you can give insurance companies access to it, or you give whoever whoever needs it can get access using a QR code, or, you know, it's basically, it's, it's a private key, basically, that you, that you give to people. And uh -huh. the idea is really that people should own their own medical data, and they should also be able to monetize it. So our idea is, you know, we can, we can, we sell that data to, to external parties, and if you, if you want, at least if you want to sell it, right, we help you to sell it, we, we bundle it, and for, for clinical, clinical trials, for research, um, you know, anything you can imagine where, where data is needed for AI, for example, uh, this data is available. And the idea is to make it the, one of the biggest, biggest, um, yeah, blockchain databases of, 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 of medical health data in the world. And you can connect anything to it. If you have a Fitbit or an, an iPhone with, with a health app on there, you can connect it to this and all the data is streamed automatically and, 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 and you know, basically be, can be accessed by people that pay for it. Okay, so that's my own individual medical data, and I'm sure I can basically, you know, own it and sell it and that kind of stuff. But of course, a lot of my data comes from hospitals and uh, and GPs. And is that also is it possible to in, to integrate that also into my uh, into my? Yeah, GPT? actually, it is. We, and that's we didn't really talk about it yet. But I set up another company called Care Protocol, uh, CareProtocol.com. That actually is a telehealth solution that's based based on based upon an EMR system, and all the data from that EMR system can be automatically sent to the Ikigai network. And this this company is still in alpha; it hasn't officially launched yet. Um, so yeah, it's possible, and we're and we're connecting other EMRs to to Ikigai as well. So it's like a, it's like a DAP, a decentralized app that that builds on top of the Ikigai network that can connect to any EMR system. Um, well, not any EMR system in the world, but they can connect the EMR systems. So, yeah. yeah. And then, so, okay, so that is that, that you need both of that part of the solution. And what is the role of the blockchain? Where does it, because you don't store any data on the blockchain. So, no, what is, where, where is the blockchain used for? The role, the role is basically to keep the data safe. So, people can only access it with a, with a you know, with a, you have a public key that you give and a private key to where people can, 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 can have access to the data. So it's 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 stored decentralized and it's it's um, yeah the, the blockchain keeps it safe basically with with private keys. So you, you use a QR code or or you know a private key to give people access to it. And, and it's also, you know we, we actually it's, it's a bit more it's a bit more complicated. We're using uh, NFTs, non fungible tokens. So your data consists of non fungible tokens that can be sold to other people. That's but that's maybe too technical for now. No 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 that's that's I, I wanted to yeah. ask you if you yeah. do anything with non fungible uh, tokens, but it's interesting. I mean. I need to keep track of my own private code, right? I mean, and if I I lose everything, I lose all my passwords, and I'm so happy that there's always this, you know, did you forget your password, etc. Why do you think people are able to keep their private keys in any way safer? I mean, people are 
extremely bad with that kind of stuff. That's why we also don't keep the money at home because we'll mess it up. Yep. <laughs> and I mean, 10% of the of the bitcoins is lost because all the keys are gone. You know, just like uh, so. So why do you, why do you why what's the role of the blockchain? Because I cannot be trusted with my own key. I'm, I'm convinced. 99.99% of the people cannot be trusted with their own private key. And that's that's one reason why why people are afraid of Bitcoin, right? It's it's a general problem with with private keys. And you know, there are solutions for this. And but I mean, I think what will happen eventually is that you're going to have biometric passwords. So basically, you know, a scan of your eyes or a scan, you know, a combination with your voice. Mm -hmm. uh, together with for example a, a multi sig wallet. So if you, you know, if if you lose your keys, there may be a solution with a multi-sig wallet that's the, that two other people can help you to get it or in combination with biometrics. So there, there will be different different ways of doing it because right now, it's, it, I understand it, it's it's too hard for people. It's too dangerous. Um, <clears throat> that's why people actually, you know, that's why people are afraid of, of use, using a hardware wallet. They're afraid of losing their, their private keys and losing their money. That's why people would, would put their money on exchanges. And, okay, so you know. we need, but, but we need to basically have a digital identity. We need a digital identity which is secure and which doesn't rely on my poor brain yeah. to basically, uh, you know, it's, it's I don't the care if they basically people. measure the way I walk or the way I talk or the way I look. And it, it has to be able to withstand fake AI software, which basically shows like I'm really there and I'm not. So. But I, digital identity is still an incredible, an incredible problem, right? I haven't seen, we haven't moved forward much in the last uh, three years. Or do you see any movement in that direction? Well, there, 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 there are a lot of initiatives, but there's no, no, still no good number one solution. So no traction. Lots of people have ideas and lots yeah. of things. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so our last question I always ask you, uh, my uh, Mark, uh, when is Bitcoin uh, going to reach 100,000? What is your prediction for today? Looking at what's happening in the market, it could happen within a year, actually. That's what I'm thinking. It's a bit of, the, the, the thing is, it's it's hard to judge. It really depends on how much money flows in. But it really... We will not come back and saying, pay me the, the me, me. No, you said, OK, it could it could happen. But do you think there is a 50 percent chance that it happens in 2021? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And if it gets, goes to hundred thousand, then all breaks go low. And then everybody goes, "Oh my God!" Then, uh, then you see the same with the dot com that all the institutions need to go in there because yeah. I think the, the shares are very expensive. The real estate is extremely expensive. There's too much money floating around. If 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 Bitcoin and a couple of other classes uh, prove that they are worth it, they will be um, there will be a run on it, and it will be very easy to go to hundred thousand. I think but so. it's really difficult to prepare the, the, to basically predict the right moment, right, Mark? The time, the timing is hard. I mean, for me, it's it's yeah. it's, it's almost for sure it's going to happen, and it's most yeah, and it's going to it's it's actually more than fifty percent chance it will happen next year. But yeah. if not, it's going to happen a year after or the year after that. It's 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 a self fulfilling prophecy, in my opinion. Okay, Mark, thank you very much from Vancouver. Thank you for your time, and uh, let's not. Uh, wait another uh, two years before we uh, see each other because it's always interesting to hear what you're thinking about it. Sounds we good. in Holland are um, still trucking along, making all kinds of blockchain solutions. And the country is doing very well. You haven't been here, I guess, in the last uh, couple of months. No, I was planning to, I, I planned to be there in November, actually. But uh, <clears throat> because the numbers went up so fast as COVID, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go from China back to Canada. And, uh, yeah, yeah. When, when you think of Holland, if you look at that, uh, how uh, how much uh, how much COVID is around here in the Netherlands? So you compare it to Canada and compare it to China. Well, I mean, compared to Canada, it, it, it's it's a lot less here, but that's more because the country is so so. I mean, to British Columbia, where I live, at least it's it's a, it's a lot less because it's it's such a big area, and you know, there's a lot less contact between people. Yeah, compared to China, there's no there's no no comparison. Right? China has sort of solved it by having a complete lockdown. And you know, constant, constantly testing, and life's back to normal there. Uh, so yeah, my kids go to school there; they, they don't even realize there's COVID anymore. It's just you know, it's like yeah, that was a couple of months ago, but you know, it, bars are open, restaurants are open, it's it's business as usual. It's uh, completely yeah, I saw there were in the Wuhan there was also pop concerts where people were uh, you know thousands of people next to each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, what do you think of their uh, of the way they did it? Uh, do you think that it will make China stronger and it will prove that the, the way they handle things there um, 
that it has in, in improved the perception of uh, people around the world? Well, it will make China a lot stronger. I mean, their economy is growing and the rest of the world is, is going down the drain. Uh, the perception of China is not going, not getting better because mainstream media don't really report what's really happening there. People still seem to think that the virus is, is due to China, which I just don't think it's correct. But I, I think it's, you know, most Western countries try to cover up that they're doing a very bad job in, in stopping the virus. And, you know, countries that do well, like New Zealand, so not just China, but New Zealand, Taiwan. Yeah. We, um, we yeah. Yeah, it's basically that part of the world. They, they get it under control. And it's, it's partly to do with the fact that it's easier to force certain things on, upon people. So they, you know, in Holland, it's very hard to, to you know, to get people to wear the, the face masks. In China, they were sold out a few days after the first reports of COVID came out in, in January. Even in Vancouver, where a lot of Chinese live, you know, I tried to buy on January 23rd this year, tried to buy face masks. They were sold out already here in Vancouver. So, you know, Chinese in general are, are quicker to see, you know, to see a risk and they're more risk averse, I guess. And so they're willing to do more to, to you know, to stop the virus. And then, yeah, the government took, took at that point, pretty crazy measures that people thought they were crazy, you know, with complete lockdowns. But it turns out they were right. I think it's because uh, they went, you know, Shanghai was closed for two, three weeks, opened up late February again. Other cities in March, Wuhan a little bit later, and yeah, and then of course it was not complete, not completely open up. But right now, the country's back to normal. It's uh, yeah. yeah, we're looking at it jealously that uh, all this can be the can be this. Uh, when will we be uh, back to normal? Okay, um, then how about uh, how about China and uh, and Canada and China and America? How do you see that uh, going? The relationship. Well, you know, when I was in when I was in, in China in October the elections hadn't taken place yet and uh people people hoped that biden would win because they, he seemed to be more pragmatic trump was just very yeah he couldn't be very unpredictable right that was the problem so with biden i think things will normalize a little bit more um i think china and canada it's not going not going very well at this point uh canada arrested the cfo of huawei uh she is uh yeah she's almost a neighbor here and uh, it's season yeah. of the year. Yeah, it's, it's it's a very unfortunate. It's uh, I think it's you know they did it because the US wanted to, wanted to, wanted to arrest her and but they haven't uh, they haven't uh, extradited her right? She's still no, it's so wrong on. It's uh, she's a bit of a martyr among the Chinese community actually for what she's doing. Um, but it's it's just not a good thing. And then you know then China arrested two 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 Canadians. Uh, they said it's not related, but well, I'm not so sure. Yeah, I mean, it is, you look, that's but that it's just not necessary. It's it's and you know that wouldn't have happened if Trump wouldn't have been there, right? It's so I hope that 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 can normalize as well when Biden is there. Um, but who knows, right? It's uh, it's it's politics. I'm I'm not a politician. Will never be a politician. No, I think. No, it's, you're not a politician. You're way too outspoken. Yeah. So I mean, do you think that uh, how, how will we be in five years? You know, Canada uh, or no, sorry, America versus uh, China. How will both countries develop? I think China may be the world leader in five years. I think they're, what's happening right now, what I'm seeing right now, there, it's going so fast, Vincent. I mean, you know, since I left in 2013, it's a completely new country again, and I hadn't been there for almost a year because because of COVID, I didn't travel there earlier this year. And I was surprised to see the changes again. I mean, they have completely autonomous taxis now in Beijing. Not a, not a lot, but a few of them. They have aut autonomous delivery vehicles. So, you know, you order your food, it gets delivered by a small delivery vehicle. It's it, it's going so fast. Everything is, you do everything through your phone. You cannot, you cannot really believe it if you haven't seen it for yourself. And you've seen it, you know, a year ago, I guess. But even since then, things have changed. November. I was there in November. Yeah. So I went there to November and basically studied the, their medical system, their right. medical system, and I went there with 30 doctors. Right. And yeah. uh, I mean, and we went to uh, uh, we doctor who had uh, 200 million uh, Chinese people on an uh, insurance uh, insurance program based on the phone or, or a little device, and uh, and with 200,000 doctors, and that now tripled thanks to COVID because yeah. and they have connections to 20,000 hospitals. So. I mean, in terms of digital delivery and and delivering, you know, through the mo through the phone and the laptop and all kinds of devices, they are way at way more advanced. And they have much better sharing of medical data. On the other end, there's a huge amount of shit uh, happening there in the uh, in the medical system. So it's a very tiered, very tiered yeah. system. 
You can find anything in China. You can find the most horrible stuff, and you can find the most exciting stuff. And that is really, that's like in America too. You have also fantastic things and you have horrible things. So, okay, five years it will be the leader. We'll see. They're um, already in purchasing, uh, purchasing uh, equivalent. They're already very close to, uh, to them, but not in dollars yet. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Thank you very much, Mark. On um, it is now uh, twelve thirty zero. It's twelve thirty at night in my uh, country. And uh, what is the rest of the day? What you're going to do? Uh, Zoom meetings, Zoom meetings, and Zoom meetings. Like it's the whole day already. It's <laughs> everything Zoom right now. So. Okay. Thank you for zooming a little bit with us in the Netherlands and uh, yeah. giving us an update. I really appreciate. All right. Thanks, Vincent. Bye bye.